Can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, today we will um, look at the differences between, um, we'll start with the difference between manual and automation testing. Um, so let's kick start on what differences we have in manual and automation. Both of them are actually the approaches to test, right? There are, um, I mean, both of them need different skill set, but uh, at the same time, you can assume that uh, they are kind of same. Um, do you think uh, manual testing is um, easy? How about that? I give you some keywords and uh, you can tell me whether it is easy or uh, difficult. Anyone? Is manual testing easy? Yes. Yes, no, okay. I'll write yes here. Is automation testing easy or is it difficult? You need to know the language if you want to do the automation. It's not very easy, I believe. Okay, so I'll write not easy first and then we will go into why this is very relative to the person who is actually doing it. So um, we said that manual testing is easy. Um, in my opinion, manual testing or any type of testing is extremely challenging because testing of an application for possible use cases with minimum test cases require high level of analytical skills, very creative mind, out of the box thinking. So if you think about developers, most of the times developer gets the requirement, right? Uh, that you have to create this um, text box and it should accept this, this, this. And there are defined ways of doing that, right? You have a programming language in which you have to choose um, some method or create some class and maybe you will be able to do it. There are a lot of problem solving situations as well, but at least you will, you have some stack overflow to help you, isn't it? In testing, do you have some stack overflow to help you to create your manual test cases? Can somebody teach you or tell you number of test cases that you have to use based on the requirement given? Is there an automation or intelligence present right now in the market? Can somebody give you that creative thinking that you need to create number of test cases or how to test something? No. So anybody who is saying that manual testing is easy is a myth. It's not a truth. Manual testing is also not easy. So nobody should underestimate manual testers. The whole um, the you and cry about um, automation. I know that it is going to help us in long run. Uh, automating test cases is an approach to expedite your testing, but it's not testing, right? So that is something that you have to understand first. Um, second attribute that we, we are going to um, talk about is which is more powerful? Is manual testing more powerful or automation testing more powerful? These are very intriguing questions, right? You have to face them at start of your career or when you're refreshing your knowledge about testing. I think manual testing is more powerful because uh, we cannot automate uh, uh, all things. No? 
Correct. So manual testing is more powerful because we can find almost all the defects from manual testing. Automation testing is good to automate the regression test cases or smoke test cases, but uh, if you uh, look at the percentage of defect detection, manual testing finds more defects than automated testing. So this is more powerful and this is less. Any uh, objections to this? Do you think automation testing is more power powerful because it you get paid more if you <laughs> learn automation? Is that so? Think about the value it is creating, right? So value creation is when you are finding more and more defects or you are preventing more defects. That is not done through automation, right? Okay. So and what about time? Yes, very good. If we consider time factor. Yeah, so let's talk about time factor in a moment and um, I'll uh, ponder on that in my next slide or next discussion. What are the benefits of um, automation? But uh, we can put the time here as well. In manual testing, we all agree that is, it is more time consuming, right? Yeah. Automation, you're talking about creating automation or executing automation? Both. So automating a test case takes less time? No, execute the test case takes less time. Executing uh, automated test case does take less time, but does creation of, if you um, think about designing or writing a manual test case versus writing or designing a automated test case, which one takes more time? Anyone who has worked on automation would Automation. Help. The automation does take more time initially to design, but it all depends on return on investment, right? So actually, um, this execution time, I would say, it is less time consuming in automation. I just want to ask more pro provoking questions so that you understand the context of what is the difference between manual testing and automation testing and why manual testing is very important, okay? Can anyone do manual testing? No. Who can do manual testing? Anyone from, uh, um, uh, can you pull somebody from the street and ask him to do manual testing? I mean, there is notion in, in I mean, at least in Indian industry, IT industry. Abhir, Testing to koi bhi kar lete, kisi ko bhi bitha ho, testing kar lete. Can somebody, anybody do testing? What are attributes of a tester, good tester? Problem solver. Yeah, the person needs to have problem solving skills. As I mentioned earlier in my discussion as well, he needs to be very creative because there is no Bible or a book available for you to follow to create de or design test cases, right? There are techniques available, but it all depends on how creative you are, how um, out of the box thinker you are, or what are your problem solving skills? No doubt in development also, you need all those qualities, but tester needs to be very versatile. He needs to have that questioning ability all the time, right? He needs to be very inquisitive, very, very um, curious, like a monkey. Monkey will pick up any object and maybe throw it or um, maybe thrash it and try to break it or whatnot, right? So the uh, QA is very specialized skill. And I mean, not everyone can do um, this, right? So 
um, if you guys agree, I can uh, add that it cannot be done by everybody, right? So you're special if you are in manual testing and you have been in industry for more time. I mean, you are special in because you have all those abilities. Okay, and automation testing, can anybody do it? Not, um, I mean, it is same like uh, manual testing, but automation testing needs specialized skills, right? And specialized skills are acquired over time. It cannot happen overnight. You cannot just have a crash course in uh, two days, three days, and okay, I'm automation tester tomorrow. It doesn't happen like that. Um, it, for you to even, uh, let's say, do a weight loss, it does take two, three months, right? Can you, I mean, there are liposuction and uh, other methods available which can reduce your fat, but uh, that's not a natural course of action, right? And naturally, you have to take efforts to learn anything. In your childhood, you have taken efforts to even draw your first letter, right? This took you a lot of time, correct? So this is the same case when it comes to automation and you have to be persistent, right? Your parents must have scolded you or told you to do it like thousands of times. Um, you, um, I mean, same is the case with maths or any other skill. So make sure um, that you spend time on learning test automation and do it right way, right? Learn it from right people, do it right way and never stop practicing. So this is where we conclude on what are the differences between manual and automation testing. I would like to jump on to my next topic, which is um, what are the real benefits of um, automated testing? Um, so we have mentioned couple of them here already. So I'll keep this slide here, um, but benefits, can anybody summarize benefits of test automation? More accuracy. Okay, and accuracy. Then... More time consuming, sir. Okay, so time. Uh, and less What else? You can reuse it many times, right? right? So you can automate repetitive tasks and reuse your test cases uh, all the time. I mean, you can reuse manual test cases as well, but here reusability is uh, multiplied as you have a lot of reusable methods, functions that you create. So through code, you can actually do that. Uh, is automation testing more reliable because it is accurate? Right? And you can also, I mean, reduce time by uh, running test cases simultaneously on maybe different brow OS browser com combinations, right? If you are doing cross browser testing, it is more, although more important that uh, however many combinations if you have, if you have automated tests, you can run them across uh, OS and browsers. That is not the case with, um, you know, uh, manual test cases. But what are the things that you should not automate? I know that now we have talked about uh, difference between manual and automation, and there are more benefits. But what should not be automated? Don't automate. What should not be automated? The test which only run in one time. Okay, very good. So anything that you're going to run only once, right? You should not spend, or you run rarely, you should not spend time in uh, automating that because the return on investment, the biggest factor here in all of this is ROI. If I'm spending 
five rupees on something, then I'm expecting that it should give back at least 10, right? Or at least seven. So if it is not giving me good return on investment, I will not spend automating that. Anything else? What we should not automate? Or cannot be automated? Okay, if you tie it with a return on investment, anything that has negative return on investment should not be automated, right? If the return on investment is not great, I will not automate it. What else? The test that uh, uh, means uh, the test without predictable results because you can't verify. Okay, so without predictable results, one of the example is user experience, right? How do you feel about the colors used? Is this color good or this color good? Can automation tell you how, what you feel? No, it cannot. Yeah, so I mean, anything to do with UX should also not be, um, which is user experience, should not be automated. And um, any um, thing that is going to take, I mean, lot of efforts, for example, um, the OTP, right? One time password, if it is going to come on to your mobile and if it is going to take you a lot of time to automate, better not to automate that. Anything, um, I mean, um, the, the third party um, verification or um, two factor authentication, all of these uh, cases are there just to verify your identity. You can ask your developers to disable that in your test environment for your easiness for your automation. If you can't do that, then maybe you can skip that step, right? I know that it is going to be, um, I mean, painful to automate it. You can, I mean, you can add, um, there are softwares which can automate that as well. Um, I mean, using Appium, maybe if you can find out the OTP and then put that in your browser, that can also be done. Okay, so we have talked about differences between manual and automation, what are the benefits and what we should not be automating. Now let's talk about how and how should we automate? What, are, what, is, what should be our approach to test automation? So most of the time when we start to learn automation, we start to learn here, right? So uh, we want to learn everything in our UI because we are very comfortable testing UI, first of all, because it, uh, we're non-technical people. We haven't learned any um, programming language or haven't kept our touch with Java or Python or JavaScript, any of the programming languages that we might have learned in our um, school or college days. So we start here and then um, once we are comfortable learning and using UI automation, then we look at uh, API automation and then we, if we get very better at API test, only then we get into unit test. I have hardly seen any automation engineer doing unit test just because he knows UI and API test. Because uh, typically the, it is a myth the, uh, in industry that only developers should write unit test. If tester is capable, then he should also be shifting left into unit test. I have mentioned this a couple of times in our sessions. But this is our approach. But this is not the right approach because unit test or UI test, or sorry, UI test or web test are more expensive to automate because um, it takes a lot of resources to automate unit uh, UI test. 
uh, you take more time because they keep failing. You need to identify the elements, uh, find out how to structure that, and then you run that test. It takes about um, 10 seconds or 15 seconds to just launch that Chrome driver. Then uh, the UI opens, it enters username, password. Then you have some test case for addition um, of maybe registering a user. Then that happens, right? So this takes like at least one or two minutes of your execution time. So they are both slow and they are expensive. Expensive because you are spending a lot of time in automating them and slow because it is uh, cre uh, creating an instance of a web browser and then doing all the actions from UI. When it comes to API tests though, API tests are very simple, right? You have get, put, post, delete, and whatnot. All these are HTTP methods. So you send a request and you get a response back, right? That interaction is less than, let's say, 10 seconds, right? So in less than 10 seconds, you verify whether a get is working properly. Similarly, your put uh, should also written in uh, less than, maybe the 10 second is too much, I guess, or one or two seconds, your post returns back, and same is the case with your post and delete or any other patch methods uh, you have uh, used. So once you have reusable methods created for testing or automating get, put, post, delete, you can reuse it almost for any API, right? What changes your is your uh, URI, which is path or header parameters or um, your body, right? So your JSON body changes. So uh, if, and authorization authentication is also there, but there is, if you create a one method that will already take care of your future APIs. So all of this is, very fast, right? If you create reusable methods, you will be able to automate your API test um, in less time. So it is compared to UI uh, automation, uh, API automation takes less, uh, less resources and it is fast as well. And last but not least, unit tests are also very cheap because you can create them within four or five minutes because you know the method you know what to expect what goes in what comes out um, i'm not an expert in unit testing by the way but what i'm trying to say is unit test creation of unit test for uh, uh, checking the condition or branch or uh, your uh, method that you have created takes less time i can explain to you in um, with an example typically in our interview process we ask people to start there right if you want to create addition of two numbers uh, method you should be able to create test and you test 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 cases for that so this is most cheap and very fast um you know uh, execution you can see it here so this is inverted test pyramid because everybody is going from ui test to api to unit test i mean these are more in number these are relatively less in number and unit tests are very less this is where development is not creating a lot of unit test or test team is not creating unit test uh, api tests um, are there but they are not relatively uh, good coverage and there are a lot lot of selenium test cases available so th this makes your test automation less reliable and um, i mean more expensive and it is slower as well whereas how it should be built is like this you should have more number of unit test cases you have relatively good number of api test cases and then you should have um accept you should only automate acceptance test and smoke test and some part of your regression test and have lesser number of ui or web automation so aapke selenium test should be lesser than 
uh, your API test. And it should be lesser than your unit test. This is what the practical test pyramid is. If you build this layer, you will catch bugs faster because they will be executed in less time and you will get faster feedback. Same cases with this, once you execute these test cases, it will be less than, let's say 10 minutes, you will get faster feedback. But if you execute 100 um, test cases of uh, web, which are approximately 100 minutes, you are going to get a feedback late in the game. And exploratory testing is always there in both of these situations. You always want to make sure that even if you have automated web test, uh, or API test, you want to do exploratory testing. So this ice cream is going to be there all the time. It just how you are going to place your ice cream cone, whether it is like this, which um, I mean, if you relate it to our real life, this kind of ice cream cone makes sense. But in test automation, you'll have to actually put your ice cream on the top of uh, the bottom of the um, ice cream cone. Make sense? Everybody clear on these aspects? Why unit test, why more unit test, why more API test and less of web test? Any question on this? Okay, going once, going twice. If nothing, we can move on to our next topic. Next topic is about now, once you have built these unit tests, API test, UI test, how are they going to be used? Most often when I ask question in interview or when whoever is the automation engineer, how did you execute your test case? So his answer is, okay, I op open Eclipse and then I right click on my test and run it. That is very annoying answer. The reason being, you have automated your test case by spending, let's say, half a day in creating one UI test. Uh, sometimes it does take half a day. Most of the times, automation engineer say that I'm uh, working on automating one scenario. It does take half a day. And after spending half a day, how are you using that automation? Executing it on your desktop. Is it going to help your developer if you're um, executing your tech test on your desktop and publishing result? I'll tell you why it will not help. Okay, this is the DevOps pipeline and there, there are a lot of um, you know, um, icons here, but just focus on uh, the purple icons, which are, let's say here, we are executing our unit test. Here, we are executing our API test. Here, we are executing our UI or web test, right? So this is a typical CI CD pipeline where we are creating code in our uh, IDs, favorite IDs. There are a lot of icons here in IntelliJ Eclipse. Then we are adding that code into our version control system which is either uh, GitHub or uh, Beanstack, GitLab, Bitbucket, whatnot. There are a lot of icons here as well. These are number of tools. If you get involved in automation, these are the number of tools that you will eventually touch in your career span because every company uses uh, different tools based on their um, uh, comfort level or their um, you know, tech stack. Unit test can be done in many technologies. We'll cover this in our next um, uh, slide. But you, when you build your code using uh, Jenkins or any other CI/CD tool, you actually run your test. This is these are the steps in CI/CD pipeline. So you run your unit test. If your unit test, let's say out of hundred, there are fifty unit test failed, then there should be a quality gate check here that if it if unit test case passing percentage is not more than 95%, then fail this build. It should return failure in this step itself. 
So this is faster feedback, right? Somebody checked in a code which is not of a good quality. It is failing 95%, I mean, 50% of my test cases. Then I should fail this build and send back the feedback. Sending this feedback faster is very important. So typically these uh, pipelines are hooked to your Slack or emails, and then you get a notification, um, your PR is merged, pull request is merged, but your code actually broke the build. So you go and fix the build. <laughs> In long, uh, bigger organizations, there are TVs, uh, I mean monitors uh, on every floor, and then it shows build status. Uh, if it goes red, everybody says, oh my God and then somebody goes and fixes that build and that somebody's name is actually shown there because he is the culprit. So there is a provision in some CI CD tools to call out the name of the culprit and it shows in that red board. So that's why, and there are, I mean, acceptance criteria or definition of done includes that there should not be any build failures and whoever is responsible should fix that. Same was the case with code coverage, right? Based on your number of unit test cases, you either derive what your code coverage percentage is, uh, more than 70 to 80% of my code should be covered by my unit test cases. If this is the acceptance criteria defined by your team, then you are implementing Sonar Cube. Uh, Clover or any of the code coverage or code quality tools to assess the quality gaps. And there is another gate here. So let's say this is G1, G2, gate two is your code quality. If it is less than this 70 to 80%, then it sends, it fails the build and sends another feedback, right? And then somebody who's responsible for making this less than 70 to 80 percent needs to fix that build. Okay, so even if you establish, establish these quality gates, as a QA representative, it's your responsibility. I mean, typically quality gates are owned by quality department in CICD environment, but if it is not, uh, this is team's response. Quality is actually team's responsibility, right? In the first session itself, we have discussed about this, but you should safeguard your interest because if there is no good coverage, then you are going to get all these defects into your testing, whether you are doing it through automation or through um, your uh, uh, manual testing, it doesn't matter. Now then after the build is deployed, so building and deploying are two different things. Maven clean install or Maven this, this, NPM install, whatever commands that you are using to build your code or just go to your um, um, IntelliJ idea and just delete the target folder and check what happens after you build it, right? Building is the process of creating compiled code of your source code, right? That is very easy definition. Guys, you'll have to join back once it uh, gets disconnected. But where, at the time of deploy, we copy all those artifacts into either uh, servers, wherever they are uh, stationed, whether it, they are in-house, um, you have a uh, data center where you host your applications or whether they are on cloud, you actually deploy that compiled code and your resources on that machine or on that server, and then you start testing. So your testing phases can include your automated API test, automated UI test, you have your automated load test as well. Then you can run them after they are deployed on on-premise or cloud uh, infrastructure. Make sense? Any questions till now? Are we clear on build and deploy stages, these two? Okay, maybe we'll have another session for this.
passionate about this. Now we um, see that there is another stage where we are executing our API test cases. So here we establish our, let's say third gate and let's keep it purple for now. So we establish our third gate where we say that um, after executing API test, we, if, even if there is, I mean, 95% of the test cases are passed, then we can continue in this CI CD pipeline. If it is less than 95%, then we send feedback, right? That 5%, I mean, 6% of your test cases are failed. Please look at uh, your test failures. And then once they are fixed, only then the build will continue. Right. If you have this stringent gating criteria, then your build not pass will not pass unless 95% of your API test cases are uh, passing. Um, you can discuss this criteria, what percentage of test cases you want us to um, keep in uh, gating uh, with your development team uh, or with your team. Sometimes even if there is one test case failure in APIs because APIs are more sensitive. Um, if you are working in microservices environment, even though microservices is actually a mis um, misrepresented many a times that it only has API and doesn't have UI, but that's not the case. In microservices environment, you have both API and UI um, as one module or one microservice. But what, why I'm saying microservices environment is because in that case, you will have a lot of clusters of API uh, hosted on different servers. And that's where you do not want any of your API test cases broken, right? So that's where you can send feedback if there is less than 90%, 95% of your test cases failing. This is another feedback. Now then comes your UI. So we're going very sequentially um, in practical test pyramid, you have seen that, right? In our practical test pyramid, we have seen lot of unit, then API, right? And then UI, don't forget this picture. So we are going from unit to API to UI. So unit test we covered here, API test we covered here, UI test we covered here. And now we're executing all of our smoke test first. What are smoke test? Very important and high level test cases, which tells us whether it is okay to deep dive into that testing. So most of the CI CD environments only high, uh, have high level smoke test as part of their CI CD built pipelines. The regression test, yes, they are run in CI CD environment, but they are run mostly nightly. All the regression tests are run at night because that, that is a quiet time and um, then nobody is using the system and you get results um, the next day morning, right? So most of the smoke tests, which are going to take less than five to 10 minutes are executed in your uh, CI CD pipelines. Now, let's say you have Similar criteria, 95% of my smoke test should be passing. It could be 100% as well. If it fails, you have gate four there, where you say that if this fails, you send the feedback, right? This feedback could be a message to Slack channel and email sent to development and testing teams that please look at the build, it has, it has failed. So all of these gating, and continuous feedback loop actually helps you uh, keep you on the toes to look at your builds all the time. And this is how people release their product faster because there is faster feedback, right? If there are any failures, you are going to go back and fix them. And you are going to do this daily. There is no escape, right? So um, apart from your manual testing, apart from your automation testing, apart from getting into grooming sessions, reviewing your requirements, design, creating mind maps with a lot of test cases. If you are working as an automation engineer, reviewing code, designing code, 
all, out of all that responsibility, you have to also look at any failures in your automated test case which are running in CI/CD environment. So make sure that you make this your, your primary responsibility because failures are due to two reasons. One is either your test is bad or second is your product is bad. Either there is a defect in your product or there is defect in your test case. You need to fix your test case, push it back to your uh, test repository, or you need to report that bug um, and tell your uh, whoever is working on that bug that this is a P1 defect because I caught it in my, uh, you know, smoke test. So smoke test defects are P1 defects because there is a, um, a most important test case of your test suite, right? So you need to report those as defects uh, or fix your test case. Most of the time, Selenium test will fail because you have, um, I mean, there is change in CSS or class name or whatever. And then these test cases will be more brittle. They will fail more often. API test will fail less often because there won't be change in API contract. What goes in, what goes out, there will be less changes here. Unit test will also change less because, uh, I mean, less because there won't be any uh, change in that method. If there is any, then that needs to be fixed. Typically, unit tests are also changed when the code is changed for something, right? So you have to make sure that uh, you are um, using your test at right location. You should never execute your test cases locally in my opinion, because then you are wasting the power of test automation. You are executing it on your local machine, reporting that back and that gets the delay, right? So you execute it on your desktop, right? Or on your computer, you send an email to developer, he might not look at it. Nobody is responsible for looking at your failures. There is no responsibility stated in your uh, except, I mean, uh, definition of done or success criteria. Then nobody is responsible for looking those looking at that failures. Unless you put it in CI CD like this, nobody is going to care for your test cases in some cases sir what is uh, what is selenium testing sorry what is selenium testing selenium okay selenium is a web automation tool it is mostly i mean widely or used for uh, automating your ui test cases web test cases Okay, you'll learn more okay. about this in next uh, week uh, if you register for uh, test automation uh, training, which is happening next week. Okay, any other question on this topic, particularly how test cases should be added to CI CD or how it, they should be executed? In earlier slide, we learned about where to focus on and what to automate first, right? In this slide, we focused on how to get benefit out of what you have automated um, and get the feedback faster so that you can give it to whoever needs to fix the test cases or um, the product defect. This process actually expedites the execution test execution and 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 then your product shipping to production happens faster any questions going once going twice none Anyone? Don't, I mean, uh, asking question is actually the first quality in every tester should have. Because if you don't ask questions, 
then you won't understand more about um, your requirements or product, right? So that is one unique quality every tester must have. So if you don't have questions, it means that uh, I have uh, been successful in describing what uh, this automation is all about. Okay. In this section, we are going to talk about what all things you have to learn as an automation engineer. Eventually, don't be scared because you can pick and choose any one of these. But these are all the things that a full stack automation engineer will learn eventually, right? There are so many things to do through automation. So we have learned about unit testing, API testing, um, then um, desktop or web testing, UI testing, all of the, them have ways to automate, but there are some specialized uh, testing types like mobile uh, load testing, cross browser testing. Um, there is uh, security testing as well. I have not included that in here, but uh, you can also do it through automation. Um, so uh, most of you might be familiar with Selenium, which is mostly adopted tool in web automation. But in web automation, there are more tools which are getting more popular, like Cypress is used in with JavaScript. Uh, before Selenium, there was something called QTP, right? All of you remember? Or maybe you're not. If you are very new to industry, QTP was there. Like when I started in test automation, QTP was at the peak and then Selenium got introduced. And Selenium has, is at the peak now and everything else like codeless automation is becoming now new kid in the block, right? New person who is um, in your vicinity. So in web automation, you have Selenium, Cypress, Catalon, Test Complete. Uh, most probably people starting with test automation start with Selenium. There are a lot of language. Selenium, is, the, is it an automation tool? It is uh, actually a library. So if you go on Selenium uh, website, it says that it is, it is a uh, library, uh, browser automation library rather than uh, automation tool, right? So it has nothing to do with testing, but testers adopted it very, um, I mean, gladly because it was, um, you know, um, making your life very easy. With Selenium, um, you can use, or with any tools, you can start scripting in any of the languages. Um, Java is most popular, I guess, um, but along with Java, you have a lot of other languages like Python is the second most famous language in test automation. Um, then JavaScript uh, in uh, past seven to eight years, I get JavaScript has a lot of frameworks as their backend is also getting into uh, JavaScript with Node.js front end with React JS, Angular JS, Ember JS. There are so many frameworks available now. So more and more our people are adopting to JavaScript now. And you can create your frameworks using Selenium with Java or C Sharp or Python or JavaScript, or you can use Cypress with JavaScript. When you start coding, you would definitely want to put your, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So you see the mind map, right? I just yes. wanted to make sure that you understand. Okay. So once you start coding, where do you store your code? You are going to use some version control tools like uh, GitHub, GitLab, Azure DevOps, or Bitbucket. Um, these are more popular tools. All of them are Git based, which is a, a, a repository version control system that everyone uses. But um, these are hosted repositories. They provide you SaaS application, I mean, SaaS um, uh, version control system. Um, 
which is basically you know, helping you to create a store your code then create a pull request or merge request for you to review your code and then they also provide you a platform to create that ci cd pipeline that i just mentioned right so all of these version control tools you will eventually learn if you have not learned already um, sharing code through zip files or this is my code uh, i have stored it in let's say google cloud uh, or um, dropbox or whatnot is not a best approach every developer whoever codes needs to understand how to work with git and git commands so uh, whenever you start uh, automating make sure that you are um, learning version control system as well definitely when you start coding you are going to use one of these um, independent uh, development environments and most probably when you start with uh, java uh, and selenium you start with uh, eclipse um, but also look at intellij idea that has more bells and whistles and more adapted than eclipse because it is very user friendly it has a lot of plugin support as well. I'm not advocating or I'm not selling uh, IntelliJ idea, but this is my experience since uh, last 10, 12 years. I've been using uh, Eclipse and idea both and I find IntelliJ more uh, appealing and uh, very easy to use. Same is the case with Visual Studio. Visual Studio is mostly used in C Sharp Microsoft environment. Uh, when you are working with um, anything to do with Microsoft technology, .NET, uh, people use Visual Studio. VS Code uh, has uh, recently, I mean, three, four or five years back, VS Code has launched. It has support for almost all the programming languages. You can code for Java, C Sharp, um, JavaScript, all of that. Uh, and everything has a separate plugin or um, libraries available pycharm is mostly used for um, python so if you are using community edition there are some plugins which are uh, there there are some uh, plugins which are very specific to let's say cucumber you are using or behave all of those plugins which are very helpful are only available in paid pycharm uh, versions so this is also a good tool for you to uh, start coding in Python. Now you know about Selenium, which is a library for browser automation, but to hold or create your test, you need a unit testing framework. And that's where test ng comes into picture. Whenever you are asked, what is the test framework that you use in your automation framework? Your answer would be either test ng or j unit if you're using uh, Java. If you are using C sharp, it's going to be either MS test, N unit, or X unit. If you are using JavaScript, Jasmine, or Jest, could be your test framework. So these are some of the unit test framework that you use to contain your Selenium code. Right, one test at a time will be executed only if you use uh, that Selenium through your unit test frameworks. And don't get overwhelmed with a lot of tools that you are seeing here. Typically, people will just start with Selenium, TestNG, Eclipse, and Java. And then they will learn all other things if they ever get involved into those projects. Uh, so fortunately, in Sparky Labs, we have touched almost all the environments here except maybe Catalon and test complete. Uh, we have been using almost every test framework here, you know, unit testing. We have been using PyCharm, uh, IntelliJ IDEA, VS Code, Visual Studio, all these IDs, uh, almost all of these except Bitbucket, I guess I have been using mostly, but all of these uh, version control system, all of these languages, maybe more, because we were also using, we are also using Ruby somewhere and um, maybe go in future, who knows, right? Um, 
sorry for adding that very late okay so all of this don't get overwhelmed by number of tools you see you will eventually learn one of them now bdd is a behavior driven development environment where you create your automation test in very simplistic language uh, very simple language given when then um, those are more natural ways of writing your test cases so on top of your selenium test ng java you add cucumber um, to make it readable it is um, actually used for describing your uh, test how you are testing it it is useful for sharing knowledge between your product owner development and qa team uh, so it is widely adopted uh, because uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility as well as uh, one more layer of reusability provided by the steps you write so this is about uh, bdd and api by the way bdd these tools are sometimes very specific to environment like specflow is cucumber's version in c sharp or .net cucumber is um, adopt i mean has support for um, java javascript ruby uh python all of them behave is very specific to i guess python in mobile testing or mobile test automation specifically apm is most widely used um uh, test automation tool there is selenroid there is robotium there is perfecto there are so many other tools which are available but apm is free and is mo most widely used uh automation tool Uh, sorry, I jumped from uh, API to mobile directly. Uh, but this is another special type of test automation. Once you, I mean, um, most probably you will all be working on at least web and API test automation. Mobile only if your organization or client really needs mobile test automation. Only then you will get involved. Here. So in API test automation. Uh, most prominent nowadays is uh, postman uh, earlier it used to be soap ui it was default go to tool for any um, soap based um, test uh, api testing and later they also started supporting rest apis uh, but nowadays everybody is going to rest i don't think anybody would um, go back to soap more Uh, there is distinct difference between soap and rest um soap is more xml based and post i mean rest is more uh, json based and there are there is as wsdl involved there is defined format in which you can request for soap based uh, apis and rest is more open but you will learn about them once you start getting involved into um, api testing first try to test your apis manually because postman tools like postman and soap ui give you a way to explore your api using different combinations right though postman tool is used to create a endpoint test you can run it from as a collection you can run it as a newman package or from your command line but traditionally um people who are doing more of a web automation through selenium test ng typically um want to create their automated api test through rest assured this is this is a library mostly used for api automation rest sharp is in c sharp and there are so many other libraries available in each of the coding languages java um javascript ruby all of them have the, their way or libraries available in api automation i have not included all of them here so that is about api automation um when you are creating your web test you want to run them in your ci cd environment but then if you want to run your test on multiple os browser combination at that time you want to consider running them on either self hosted grid so typically selenium grid uh, uh, self hosted is used for execution 
or nowadays as there is more adoption for cloud these are cloud based uh, infrastructure available browser stack source labs cross browser testing there is new entrant here now lambda test so all of these actually um, give you um, an opportunity to run your test on cloud environment and they are pretty easy to configure you can just get your username and api key uh, for you to send your test case for execution in the cloud select your os browser browser version and uh, the rest job lambda test or browser stack or source lab will do or cross browser test and then you get a report back yes it is executed there are features to take screenshot or videos as well so you should at least learn one of these um, to have more relevance um, in cloud testing platform um, there is also uh, it the infrastructure can also be set in aws azure or uh, google cloud um, but if uh, there is a way easy way out why bother right now about desktop automation this is uh, becoming less popular nowadays because nobody creates desktop applications but uh, if you want to really automate any desktop application which is created for a specific use in a product company you can use winamp driver which is a uh, free auto it which is mostly used by it people for automating smaller tasks but can be used uh, because it has a uh, um libraries available you can use auto it in uh, desktop uh, windows desktop uh, application automation micro focus uft has uh, um, for, uh, support for that as well and sequly is another tool which is mostly using your screen sizes and pixels for identifying elements this is used in very peculiar situations in your selenium automation uh when you really want to interact with uh, uh something which is native to your desktop so these are desktop automation tools uh when you are doing load test automation or load testing particularly um most popular tool is jmeter or gatling or load runner i mean load runner was most popular um load testing tool it is very expensive too but jmeter is in to more of a free and more popular there are a lot of plugins available as well to do lot of recording and playback um, nowadays <clears throat> running your uh, jmeter test there are lot of uh, cloud based infrastructures are also available which lets you simulate the load for thousands and thousands of uh, uh, simultaneous users across the globe um, and across time across time zones and gatling is also available for um, load testing uh, have i covered every aspect of test automation tool yeah i guess so um so as i said initially don't get bogged down by the tremendous number of technologies and tools available you have to start very small and learn to uh, do one thing best and then incrementally you can add more on top of it when i review code for almost uh, any of these languages i look for specific things which needs to be i mean you can design your uh, test automation framework such that you will find those problems in that code and uh, then try to fix it you don't have to be perfect on day one you can start really writing very small programs of addition of two numbers five even or odd numbers um, i know that people advocate that you have to um, be very good at data structure and algos and algorithms but that comes later when initially you're starting as a um, fresher in test automation you should at least understand object oriented concepts of any programming language if you are starting with java learn that well uh, the loops um, the um, 
you know, if then else and switch case statement, um, how to work with strings, because that is the most used data type, right? Then start using other data types and data structures. If you're working with arrays, array list, or uh, hash maps, how to use them and what is its use? Uh, what is list of hash map and how can you use that with various data types, right? So all of that will be more important than using data structure and uh, um, algorithms, in my opinion. And if you start small and incrementally build your skill, uh, eventually you will become expert in test automation. Um, I have not seen anybody uh, not doing test automation after one month in Sparkle Labs, even if he or she is fresher. So I would strongly advocate um, enrolling into our next, next session into test automation. And uh, I'll send an email about that as well. Uh, any questions on these tools or um, test automation specifically? Okay, the floor is open for any question actually in testing, test automation, DevOps, anything that you would like to know. 